gentlemen, thank you very much for inviting me to this uh, conference. I think it's very important to keep in touch during this uh, pandemic. Well, I'd like to explain something to you about the uh, financial situation as not only member of uh, German Bundestag, the German Parliament, but also member of the Financial Committee. I have some um, views on the economic situation I want to share with you. I got many phone calls and emails from all over the world, people asking me, well, we heard that you get thousands of euros for your companies um, in cash. And they were wondering about this. And I want to explain it to you what the German state did and um, what the action is we are doing here in Germany to fight the pandemic. <clears throat> well, um, Germany was uh, hit very hard uh, by the COVID-19 pandemic. And there were some packages uh, of measures of the federal German government to protect the health of the citizens, support the jobs and businesses, and to preserve the social cohesion. This has certainly only been uh, partially achieved. In particular, the goals of preserving jobs and companies can be regarded as unsuccessful in view of the dramatically increasing unemployment rate and the corporate insolvency rate. The German export balance slumped sharply in April due to the Corona crisis. As the Federal Statistic Office in Wiesbaden announced this week, goods worth of 75.7 billion euros were exported to other countries in April, April this year. As a result, exports fell by 24% compared to March, and they even shrank by 31% compared with the same month in the previous period last year. According to the agency, it was the largest decline in export in a month compared to the same month in the, uh, in the previous year since they started the foreign trade statistics in 1950. So it's a very dramatical situation for Germany. As early as March, exports had decreased by 7.7% compared to the previous month. The main drop uh, was an export to the EU member countries and to the United States. For example, the export volume to France fell by over 48% compared to April 2019. It was minus 40% after Italy and minus 35% to the United States. This is a dramatical situation for a state. In contrast, exports to China fell by 12.6% to 7.2 billion euros. According to its own assessment, the federal government is making determined, powerful and targeted efforts to protect Germany. The so-called protective shield for employees, the self-employed and companies is the largest aid package in the history of the Federal Republic. The total amount of budgetary measures is 353.3 billion euros and the total amount of guarantees is 819.7 billion euros. The federal government will take out new loans amounting to around 156 billion euros for financing. Numerous measures are taken to ensure health care and time of crisis. The federal government is providing an additional 3.5 billion euros, among other things, to protective equipment and the development of a vaccine uh, and other treatment measures. We can only hope that during the next pandemic, officials will remember um, the locations um, of the protective equipment. Now it is largely not used and the effective vaccine has not been developed yet. Another 55 billion euros are available, available for fighting pandemics. This shall be important in order to be able to react flexible to a short notice to the development of the pandemic. But I'm asking myself, where did these 55 billion euros go? The federal government is putting in place a protective shield for hospitals, hospitals to cushion loss of revenue and higher costs. Current loss of earning is also cushioned for resident doctors. The points have almost less effects. The federal government wants to help families to secure income. There are two or three points. Let me tell you about this. The loss of earnings of families resulting from the daycare of schools closures should be largely, largely compensated. This is also applied to the self-employed and freelancers. Families with lower incomes due to short-time work should get easier access to child supplement. 
This also doesn't really work in practice. The affected families have to hope for goodwill from the employer in order to be able to overcome the crisis financially. Small businesses and the self-employed and freelancers shall receive very extensive and rapid support. The federal government provides 50 billion euros to provide unbureaucratic emergency aid for small businesses, the self-employed and freelancers. This means that operating grants are granted only for three months and do not have to be repaid. Emergency aids, um, these programs uh, are from the federal state, the application and therefore protest from a single source in the federal states. This looks like follows. Self-employed and companies with up to five employees receive up to 5,000 euros. Self-employed and companies with up to 10 employees receive up to 15,000 euros. This was a single time payment for these three months. These grants essentially marginal for the real affected companies. For other companies, they may look like a nice little gift. Self-employed people have easier access to basic security so that life food and accommodation are secured. The asset review is suspended for six months. Benefits should be paid out very quickly. This means that self-employed are not uh, are now quickly passed down to the bottom. Real help looks different. There are also protection shields for bigger companies. There's an economic stabilization fund. The real economy shall receive extensive support to protect companies, employees and their jobs. The federal government has set up an economic stabilization fund, which is aimed particularly at large companies and can provide large scale aid. And supplements of liquidity aid already declined, although the KFW, this is a state bank supplying the companies with money, has special programs. The funds include 100 billion euros for corporate actions and 400 billion euros for guarantees. The fund can be refinanced KFW programs that have already been approved with up to 100 billion euros. A billion euro aid program has been made available through the state owned KFW to provide companies, the self employed and freelancers with liquidity. To this end, KFW pro provides various loan programs in unlimited volume, unlimited. Affected companies have access to KFW loans through their own house bank. If necessary, they also use the instrument of guarantees. This is intended to alleviate financial, diff financial difficulties for small and medium sized companies, which is not their fault, but drives them um, into higher debts, if not over debts. Tax reliefs measures for companies and the self employees are also implemented so companies um, of all sizes re receive um, tax aid to improve, improve their liquidity. For companies directly affected by the coronavirus, the following will apply until the end of 2020. This is tax um, prepayments also, uh, already made can be partic uh, partially reimbursed. The amount of tax prepayments can be adjusted. Tax authorities grant um, deferral of tax debts and enforcement measures are waived. There are also eight measures for employees. Companies have been able to apply for short-term work uh, benefits since the beginning of the Corona crisis. Um, if at last, if at least 10% of the employees are affected by the loss. With the short-term work allowance, affected companies can continue to employ their employees even if they're not directly working for them at the same time, because they can have wages and social security contributions paid by the Federal Employment Agency. This is, includes agency workers. Short-term work benefits therefore help, for, uh, help to avoid dismissals. Due to the uh, severe economic consequences of the Corona crisis, millions of employees are affected by short-term work. It's roughly 7 million employees right now. Therefore, the coalition committee agreed to increase the short-term allowance. The increase depends on the duration of the short-term work and apply at most until the end of the year. The coronavirus knows no borders and has not only hit Germany hard, 
but also many of our partners in the European Union and worldwide. Germany is committed to um, uh, different uh, corporations and international solidarity. National solo effects cannot be solutions neither in Europe nor worldwide. The European finance ministers have launched a solidarity package worth 540 billion euros, which consists on three pillars. First, state aid. This is lines of credit from the European Stability Mechanism, the ESM. Second, the SME support. This means the Guarantee Fund of the European Investment Bank, EIB. And third, protection of jobs, short time work pro uh, promotion program of the EU Commission. It's called SURE, S U R E. In addition to the emergency aid measures, the medium to long term management of the crisis and its cost will be a key issue on the coming months. Also, during the German EU presidency starting in July 2020. If the acute health crisis is over, the European economy will need an economic stimulus to emerge stronger from the deep economic crisis. Germany and France therefore presented an initiative to Europe's economic uh, recovery on May 18. The goal is Europe should emerge from its crisis stronger, united and in solidarity. The heart of the initiative is a fund with a volume of 500 billion euros. Fund for Economic Recovery, uh, it's called the Recovery Fund. In addition to the emergency aid measures, the medium to long-term management of the crisis and its costs will be key issue uh, to the coming months, also during the EU uh, presidency starting. It should be noted that the federal government caused the majority of the economic problems itself through its poor crisis management. These protective shields measures are likely to be largely useless. Even if the economic picks up again next year, 55 to 60 billion households effects per year can be still accepted in public uh, budgets. A measures make up to the smaller part at 11 to 40 billion euros. The lion's share uh, results from the reduction of tax revenues. The party seems to be over. Germany was facing a decrease of economy before the crisis and the Corona crisis hit Germany very hard and made the situation even more dramatic. That would probably have been the case without Corona, but this will help the government better uh, disguise its total failure. So the situation is very hard. So there's a lot of liquidity and money in the market but nobody's thinking about the future taxpayers who have to return the money and the next generations who still have to pay for our debts we are making right now. So just putting liquidity in the market is no solution from my point of view. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Stefan. Um, I, hope, I hope you can hear Hearing me now. Thank you for this very interesting elaboration. But um, uh, I have some additional questions to you because you were uh, mentioning some quite interesting uh, numbers in your speech. And as far as I understand, if I got you right, uh, there was a total of 352.3 billion euro of um, budget um, uh, of budget uh, money um, uh, guaranteed uh, for um, the, the cause of uh, saving the economy from the current crisis. And that's, if I got you correct, implied also 156 billion euros of loans, right? So um, uh, we um, heard the, uh, the, the, the elaboration that you made on the measures that were being taken, uh, but just to clarify it a little bit, there have been uh, quite a lot of discussions in terms of different approaches being used within the European Union and uh, the different approaches that the countries were using. So um, what was the uh, policy that your uh, political party was promoting and what was the policy that you yourself uh, find optimal uh, in order to uh, tackle uh, this current crisis in Germany? And another question, how uh, has this crisis and how has this pandemic affected the 
uh, relations within the European Union. So do you think the uh, European Union and its policies are demonstrating effectiveness or is it one of those situations when everyone is on their own? And how do you think the pandemic uh, in the, you know, in the long run, how would this affect uh, the European Union, um, you know, as a union of countries that have been acting so different in, um, you know, in this pandemic? Well, thank you very much for these questions. Um, let me point out that there's even more money in the market and the KFW is also doing um, trans company transactions. So you probably heard that our biggest airline, the Lufthansa, is in big trouble now. The plane on the ground, they're not flying, they're not working. And the state is thinking about taking over a big share of the Lufthansa, the biggest German airline. And uh, I have problems with this because if the state is um, stepping into the situation of a business partner, market player, this never worked in the past. So there should be a free play of the of the market. The state can give money for a limited time, but they shouldn't be a market player themselves. You know, they try to to save the Commerce Bank. This was the uh, second biggest bank in Germany, and this didn't work. So they should step out of the market. It's taxpayers' money, and they shouldn't be a market player at all. Um, well, they have hundred billion euros for. Um, for buying companies or to take over shares. They have 400 billion euros for guarantees for big companies and even big companies like um, Adidas. They got a loan of 3.5 um, billion euros in the past weeks. So there are many, many companies, even big companies, um, who step under the, the shield of the state. Uh, to come to your second question, so the solidarity in Europe, well, um, the, the national states or the European Union hope that there's a big solidarity and that Europe and the European countries stick together, uh, especially in the situation of the crisis. But as uh, we saw in the crisis, uh, all countries were on their own. They were, there was some help. There was even help from Russia to, to Italy with uh, medical equipment. But the big solidarity and the organized help from the European U Union was missing totally. So in this crisis, every country uh, had to rely on their own. And this was a sad moment to see this. And if the European Union um, should work for the future, we have to improve this uh, to look for more solidarity and for solutions for the whole of Europe. Coming from uh, Dina Rashad, um, another question coming from Dina Rashad and addressed to you. Uh, how do you see the situation with the second breakout anticipated? Will that make current situation even worse or will it be flattened? Okay, hello Dina. I met you at one of our last meetings here in Berlin. Um, it's very good to see you here on the, on the online conference. Well, to answer your questions, I'm not really believing in the um, in a second uh, pandemic uh, of uh, of COVID-19. I'm still waiting for the for the second wave of uh, of the swine flu in 2012. I'm still waiting for this. There was no second one. And um, if you ask me about the the threat of Corona-19, COVID-19, I think it's not as bad as we thought it is. The German here or the European um, health institutions are very well prepared. We flattened the curve and um, I think it turned out that COVID-19 is not as dangerous as it was supposed to be and I'm not believing in the second wave. Okay, well that's that's quite optimistic. So let's all hope that uh, we would need to face the uh, the second wave and um, uh, on the news we're seeing quite a lot of uh, um, uh, citizens in Germany as well, just like all over the world, are quite unhappy because of the lockdown and because of the restrictions that uh, that it implied. And quite a lot of people going out to the streets and saying that uh, for them, freedom of movement was uh, more important than um, the, the possible threat of COVID, which, as again, we could see, especially in Germany, had 
quite low uh, death rates, right? Uh, so let's stay optimistic for that. And Stefan, I would like to uh, draw your attention to the chat here. There is quite a vivid discussion following your speech. And we have uh, Mikhail Schumann saying that the liquidity injection is also based, among other things, on the assumption that this will enable consumption to resume. We are very restrained here in our estimates. Families in need increase savings, the savings rate, not spending. And then we have uh, Professor uh, Jagdish Khatri from India thanking you for the speech and uh, illustrative comments, uh, thanking uh, Mikhail Schumann for illustrative comments. And we have Natalie Yum saying that she uh, absolutely agrees that the state should not be a market player. So please join uh, this discussion and maybe there will be some more questions uh, arising. Uh, do you